In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I set up the OM-1 for astrophotography. I have two of these cameras now and it's time to set up the second one. Basically, these settings will be for if you are stacking your images. If you are taking single images, the settings are a little bit different, but are mostly on the same lines. So this camera has a boatload of features and settings in it and a lot of menus and it's a totally different menu interface from the older Olympus cameras. Now, I typically set C1 for taking pictures of the kids, C2 is for wildlife photography, birds, so forth. Three and four are what I use for astrophotography. So in C3, uh, typically this is for selectable shutter speeds that I would use the built-in intervalometer for. And then C4 is what I would set the camera for, for bulb photography used in case with an intervalometer where we connect via the side port right here. Other than that, pretty much all the rest of the menu settings are going to be pretty much the same. So let's kind of start going through those. We're gonna set the camera for M first. We're gonna go into the menu. And yes, I do like the new menu button because it just makes going through all of these things a lot easier. First off, raw images. Now, you can take raw plus JPEG as well. Just be aware that the JPEG means a little bit of extra processing for the camera and that might warm it up at night. Now, image aspect ratio, of course, we want to use the entire sensor. It's a four-third sensor, so selecting the four-thirds, we use the entire thing. Image review. Uh, I actually do like a one second image review afterwards. Shading compensation, definitely we turn this off. Shading compensation will of course be something that we don't need because if you're taking proper flats, then uh, this doesn't really matter. We have picture mode. In picture mode, yeah, I like to use muted. Oops. White balance. Is something actually I set to daytime, sunny. And then keep warm off. Adobe RGB. And Adobe RGB, I know some of you are gonna say, ah, oh, that's information is still kept at the raw file. Well, when we stack our images, typically whatever settings are in the raw file are what are going to get applied to the fits or tiff file that your stacking software creates when it tries to stack your images so you want to set it to adobe rgb because you are using a larger uh, spectrum of the color palette uh, i typically set my iso steps to ev1 it just makes going through and changing things faster off noise filter definitely turn off low iso processing I mean we don't have it on but you know detail priority of course noise reduction is also turned off flicker scan we don't need that on um, EV steps of course I'm gonna change that to one exposure shift doesn't really matter metering doesn't really matter too much no. of course this is flash stuff this doesn't matter Drive mode, in drive mode, so drive mode, all of these right here are going to be more for like rapid imaging, which we're not doing, of course. Image stabilization. Now, Robin Wong did a video and he proved that for daytime photography, image stabilization can be left on, okay? For astrophotography though, we're tracking the sky with a tracker, usually over prolonged periods, so you definitely do wanna turn this off because these things are so freaking good that they will try to compensate for the tracker. Um, and then, of course, all of these we can turn off. None of these really matter. None of these really matter as well. Keystone compensation, of course, keep that off. None of these matter. Autofocus. Now, the Starry Sky Autofocus, there are two different settings. So speed is for if you are hand holding the camera and doing starry photos. Accuracy will basically slow the camera down and focus more on precision, okay? And so I usually use accuracy because typically I'm always attached to a tripod when I'm doing this. 
the autofocus on start stop there is actually a dedicated button for it right there or you can use the AEL button or even the half shutter button it looks like the autofocus luminaire of course we want to turn that off save us batteries and we don't need to be illuminating the field you might upset some other people if you're at a star party and then of course subject detection doesn't really matter here <clears throat> now the preset manual focus this is basically set to infinity and this is kind of a good thing because you know it kind of resets the lens to infinity and you're going to be starting there anyways now the manual focus clutch i do turn this off peaking settings can be used uh, if you're doing like moon type photography or maybe photography of the sun uh, these can be very handy of course for the sun you're probably going to want to send it to like uh, either maybe black or something other than red and yellow because uh, the, moon, the sun's going to be kind of red but for the moon red and yellow will work just fine now reset lens to off so what this will do, this means that like if you turn the camera on and off it's going to change the position of the focus i say turn this off so that like let's say if the next morning you do flats uh, you can have the focus still set to the exact same spot because you do want the focus in the same spot when you take your flats now of course all the video stuff doesn't really matter so we're going to skip through that same thing with playback now let's go through the buttons and dials Actually, really nothing here we need to adjust. Nothing here either. Frame rate. So the frame rate of the live view I set to normal because, you know, it's better to, for the thing to be taking longer exposures to show you what's going on. It'll just give you a little bit clearer picture through the viewfinder and so forth. Anti-flicker needs to be off. Selfie set doesn't really matter. Although, I'm actually going to turn it off. Who knows? Maybe the camera will see if a face in the stars now the EV style I typically use the EV style that gets the image as big as possible and in, in daytime photography I, I like EV style one and then grid you can actually turn on different grids and so forth I actually do like having a grid set on mine and for the color well, I think there's a couple different kinds. There's the crosshair one. Actually, there's two different crosshair ones. There's one that shows you the thirds, and then there's, of course, a much smaller grid. Keller presets, I, I, I like using red, okay? Typically, I have two different Keller presets set up. One that's blue and one that's red. Blue would be great for imaging the sun, and red, of course, would be great for all other types of astrophotography. Because we really want as many things red as possible so that we don't hurt our night vision. Now, card formatting. Typically, I take all my images on card slot 1. Card slot 2 is, is used for video. And file name, of course, is also superfluous. Like I said earlier in another video, 300 dpi, that's just a printing thing. Airplane mode. Okay, airplane mode actually disables the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. If you're trying to get through a long night, you may actually want to do this because this will save you a little bit of battery. Although there are some times though you might want to turn this off and basically use the Wi-Fi if you were controlling it with the app on your phone. Because there are some types of astrophotography you would want to do that. Sleep time. Yeah, we could like turn that off altogether. Auto power off. Yeah, we might turn that off as well. And oh, by the way, uh, for battery priority, I typically do use a battery pack. Like I'll use that battery first or even exclusively. I might even leave the, the battery in the camera completely out. Just for the sake of when you draw a charge from a battery, it does cause that battery to warm up. And of course, in the summertime, heat is a big issue. And so we want to keep as much heat as far away from the sensor as we possibly can. 
And then of course these are just other settings. Now, pixel mapping. Pixel mapping is something that you would want to do about once to every six months to a year, okay? If you do pixel mapping, you need to go back and redo all of your calibration frames, like your biases, your darks, and so forth. And so that's one of the reasons why I typically do pixel mapping just once a year. Uh, typically around the new year, I do a whole new set. Now for, for my settings, I'm not gonna set it up here, but typically I put things in here like starry sky autofocus, and maybe a few other focusing things and some shutter speed and also the actual built-in intervalometer timer I will set into my menu options and save them. So let's go all the way back here to the beginning and custom mode. We'll set these to custom mode three and that will be for In manual mode. Now, for bulb, that of course would use if I'm using an external intervalometer, which I do use quite often. I would go back and do all the settings again, and then I would set that to custom mode four. So that way, when I'm out at night, I just simply rotate the dial to three, and I'm ready to go with the internal intervalometer. Set the custom mode dial to four, and then I'm ready to go with an external intervalometer. So there you go, guys. Have fun.